Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Jacob Hadadeji from Dublin University of Technology, South Africa. And I will be presenting this work on behalf of myself and Samuel Abejide from Water Sisulu University in South Africa, and Professor Mohamed Mustafa from the University of KwaZulu Natal here in South Africa. The title of this paper is Numerical Response Analysis of Structural Strength Capacity of Fly Ash inverted pavement. And before I go in the presentation, I would just like to share with us the table of content. Um, I will be doing a little bit of introduction. Then afterwards, the numerical response analysis, and we'll look at the results and thereafter the conclusions. So if we start with the introduction, firstly, we will know that conventional flexible pavement has found application worldwide. And this is as a result of the fact that it is more economical when compared to the rigid pavement. However, over time, there has been, uh, what's it called? The, the concept of soil stabilization has come into play, whereby you have, uh, what's it called? The cement treated as the base layer. But over the years, there has been a change in its dynamics, which brings the concept of inverted pavement. So in the inverted pavement, the cement treated layer is being positioned as what? As a sub base. And the UGA, which is the unbounded granular uh, aggregate, as what? As the base layer. This actually is against the normal, uh, the norm, which with the flexible pavement, you look at it from the strongest material to the weakest material. But there is a little bit of what inversion in the case which brings about the concept of inversion, inverted pavement. And if you could see on the screen here, you see this picture, which is actually pointing at the fact that this is a flexible pavement. This is the conventional arrangement. But in the inverted pavement, there's a little bit of what of change, which we talked about just now. So you will see that what the concept of rearrangement results in towards potential and economical or what's it called economic benefit structures, which have been successfully used here in South Africa and also has been tested in the United States. So considering all this advantage of the cement treated layer in an inverted pavement, there's still some questions around that to say, oh, with the cement treated layer, it's costly. So we actually in the study look at the concept of what replacing the cement using what the fly hash as a way out, which is an industrial waste, which we are actually solving a problem of landfill problem and the likes, and probably even solving a problem of pollution. So why not use that? Let me give an instance in the case of South Africa. South Africa, I think uh, with the world, is actually the fourth largest producer of fly ash. And based on the report, it's run about only 10% of it has been used. So we are looking at more ways in which flash can be used. And most especially in the aspect of what road construction as a case may be. So if you look at it, apart from the dynamics of flash, there's been what's it called a current trend from the use of empirical design, talking about the old CBR, the empirical design, the AASHTO method and the like to the mechanistic, whereby we simulate and analyze pavement. So with that concept, we looked at it that's okay, let us look at the simulation of inverted. Probably we could have a feel or a, a good look at the situation or the, 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 the analytical process of the inverted pavement. So in essence, for us to do a numerical response analysis, we have to make some assumption that is trying to fit into the real life scenario of what is on the actual road and actually putting it into a simulation environment. So part of the assumption talks about what pavement we assume to be perfectly bonded in the Habakkuk software, as a case may be, we, we use the Habakkuk software in the analysis and the model is fixed on the bottom of the subgrid and the roll constraint uh, was a roller constraint on the vertical boundaries. So a static standard equivalent standard exchange load with dual tires is being used in this analysis. And we looked at the contact area, which it's taken as rectangular, although there are a lot of developments around that to say, okay, 
probably we should use what's it called the tire tread part and the latch. So, but we use in this particular analysis, we use the rectangular area um, for the analysis, and you can see the what's it called the dimension and the latch. So EXL, which is the equivalent axial load, we use 80 kilonewton with dry tires and the uniform pressure to be 0, 0,67 mega, uh, what's it called, mega Pascal. So this is based on South Africa guide. So if you look at here, we're talking about the material categorization. And as we all know, which regards to um, numerical modeling, we, we need to actually what, get the characterization of uh, material characterization, right? So we have material characterization for the flexible and also have the material characterization for the inverted pavement. And you will see, and just to point out that the material characterization for the flash is from a laboratory test, which actually flash has been mixed at 18%. To what's called the soil, which is actually um, and a little bit of uh, what's called one percent of cement to actually uh, what's called um, to boost the flash, which is available here in South Africa. So we have the layer thickness, we have the elastic modulus, we have the posture ratio and the density, which are more the material characterization factor which are needed in uh, what's called in an American model and the likes. And I think at first, which I will just talk a little bit about the results in terms of time is the fact that what we did a comparative analysis and what why we did the comparative analysis is to do a performance check of the models which are developed in Habakos that is the 3D and the axial symmetric analysis and you will see that what there is the results obtained in Habakos, MIPAD which is a South African software and Winjula which is a US software they are significantly what similar. The MIPAD results, however, shows very close similarity with the uh, Abacus XGS symmetric numerical model in terms of the horizontal strain generated at the bottom of the asphalt layer. And similarly, the vertical comprehensive strain generated at the top of the subgrade. So, but we did not go ahead to do like a was a call um uh, um for the detail around around um around the design life but if we have done that we would have seen that what the c here which is the what's it called the abacus model would have actually given us a higher design life for the pavement structure so we'll look at that and you will see that what it's actually a little bit of similarity uh, except for this particular case where we have um, a little bit of out of order, but that's just to tell you, I think, more of material and the like. So you will see this table talks about the effect of flash stabilized layer thickness on the anisotropy of what flexible pavement and inverted pavement, and that is presented just there. So we went a little bit further to look at um, to, to, to the aspect of the comparative analysis, and we focus more on the numerical analysis results, whereby we use the Abacos, the MIPAD and the Winjula just to compare. And you will see that what, when we look at what the tensile strain uh, at the asphalt bottom, you will see that what they are of close similarity. Although this is actually highlighted just to point out to us that you will see that in this case, especially for flexible pavement, you see that what mm, the tensile strain on the asphalt is a little bit higher when you compare it to that of the inverted pavement. And we will get to that. But you will see that what there's a, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, a flow of similarity in the results which are obtained. And you will see for the MIPAD and the Mojula, yes, yeah, some of these uh, talking about the stresses, the, the, the deflection. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we could not obtain that from um those particular software but just to point to us that you see that there is a little bit of what similarity and this is just pointing out that yes although we 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 know that um the other cause or the numerical analysis actually performs better but just to point out in the aspect of flexible pavement uh was in the aspect of this analysis there's a close similarities which is actually obtained 
So if you look at the inverted pavement, that is the anisotropy, I think one of the things you must notice is the based on the arrangement and the different what's it called layers which are being used, you will discover that what the tensor strain, the tensor strain at the bottom of the asphalt actually increases while the vertical strain in the subgrid actually reduces. What this is just pointing across to us is the fact that if we compare both the flexible and the inverted pavement, oh, flexible will actually perform better in terms of fatigue cracking, but inverted will actually be in second place in that context. But when we're talking about the vertical strain in the subgrid, the inverted pavement will actually what perform better. So in terms of routing, the inverted pavement will actually perform better in this case. And just to point it out is the fact that we'll look at it, we'll see that what with the increase in the fly ash stabilized layer, it can be seen that what there's an increase in the life cycle resulting from what the reduced overall, that is the uh, mice stress deformation in the thickness of the asphalt. So you will see that what, however, on a comparative note, the two models that is the flexible, how they reduce the flexion ratio as compared to the inverted. However, in performance, the inverted pavement is more durable with minimum stress resultant deformation under the service load. And you will see that what this actually, this observation actually what corresponds with uh, what's the call now previous studies, which uh, you will find more details in actually the paper. So if we look at what's it called the image here, talking about the deformation, the image here talks about the deformation and we're trying to analyze the effect of asphalt stabilized thickness layer, which we've talked about. But one of the things we just try to point out here is the fact that what, if you look at the deformation model for a 150 mm, that is the, what's it called? The asphalt, uh, ply ash stabilized layer, you will see that what there is a little bit of similarity. And you will just notice that what with, with the, that is in the inverted pavement, you see that what the load actually spread a little bit more out as compared to that of the flexible pavement. So to bring this to a conclusion, you will see that what the result from this study indicates that increase in the U, the unbounded granular aggregate thickness that is from 150 to 300 with constant flash stabilized layer that is 150 sustains the what? The service load. Although it should be pointed out clearly that flexible pavement delivers better resistance to fatigue cracking even with what, with the increase in the, what's it called, the unbounded granular aggregate uh, layer thickness. However, results also indicate that what, the inverted pavement delivers better rotting, better resistance to rotting when compared with flexible pavement. And putting this into context, we will see that what inverted pavement is actually what, it's actually more preferable because if there is a problem with uh, what's the call, uh, in terms of routing that is in the subgrade, then that means you have to remove all the top layers and the like. But whereas in the case where inverted pavement is actually failing on terms of the fatigue cracking, then we can actually easily do what's the call, remove the uh, asphalt surface and probably do a relay or probably put uh, what's the call, an overlay as the case may be. So with that being said, thank you. And... Um...